the Wemo Stage Scene Controller came out around April 2021. And although Belkin stated it was thread ready, the smart remote did not support thread and it relied on Bluetooth to connect to HomeKit with mixed results being reported. However, at CES this year, Belkin announced the Wemo Stage would get an update to support Thread. That update has now landed. So in this review, I'm going to take you through the design, setup, how it works in HomeKit Plus, taking you through some tests between Thread versus Bluetooth and how it works over Thread with Wi-Fi and Zigbee devices. So continue watching this video to find out more. <laughs> Hi, welcome back and my name is John and this is HomeKit Authority where we cover everything HomeKit from the latest insights to honest reviews and detailed tutorials. So don't forget to check out the rest of the channel and if you like what you see, it'd be greatly appreciated if you could subscribe and hit the bell button. The Wemo Stage Scene Controller is $50 and it works exclusively with Apple HomeKit. The device comes in three parts, the remote, backplate, and inner plate. It features three buttons that allow you to control up to nine scenes or devices. It also supports Bluetooth, but as of January 2022, it now supports Thread and is the only Thread remote available at the time of this review. It's powered by a CR2032 coin battery which Belkin says will last up to one year. It's worth pointing out at this point that Belkin did send me over four of these for testing free of charge. However, I wanna be absolutely clear with all of my reviews, I'm under no obligation to give a favorable review because of that. You can read more on the review promise and ethics statements in the description below. So let's now look at unboxing and the design. Inside the box, the Wemo stage controller comes wrapped in a cellophane package with the device already assembled. Opening up the packaging will free the battery and the device itself. You also get a manual that if required, guides you through how to get things started. The Wemo stage comes in three parts, which features the remote, a back plate, and an inner plate to hold the remote in place. This inner plate holds the remote using magnets and features a 3M strips for sticking to surfaces. Additionally, the plate features screw holes, which are great for standard Decora plates. The remote features three buttons with a single, double or triple raised dot on each button. These buttons give you the ability to perform three actions, single press, double press and long press, which means the remote can perform nine actions. The remote has a cover on the back, which can be removed. And this reveals a CR2032 battery compartment, a reset button and a HomeKit code. You may also notice that the Wemo stage features NFC HomeKit pairing and more on that later. Now moving on to HomeKit setup. The Wemo stage controller has two ways in which you can start the HomeKit pairing process. The first being the normal scan the code approach. The other is via NFC, which you simply wave your compatible iPhone under the status light to start the pairing process. I used the NFC option and it worked great to start the HomeKit setup process. This guides you through adding the device by asking you which room you want it assigned to and then you name the device and it's all done and ready to go. So in under about a couple of minutes, I'm all good to go. As already mentioned at launch, the Wemo stage only supports a Bluetooth and only adds six total actions via the three physical buttons on the remote. But the latest version of the firmware 2.9.6 not only brings thread support, but extra actions. While in my case, the update popped up straight away after I added the remote to HomeKit, I've seen reports of users having to wait a while for the update or sometimes having to remove the remote and pair again. But luckily I had none of these issues. Now moving on to the Wemo stage mounting options. The Wemo stage can be fixed on a wall using the peel and stick adhesive strips, or it can be screwed to a wall. Just like the Philips U dimmer, the Wemo stage and the mounting plate house a set of magnets that make the remote easy to dock and undock, which means you can carry it around your home if you so wish, and when done, put it back in its cradle. But because the Wemo stage has magnets built in, then you can attach it to any metal surface. I attached the Wemo stage I was using in the studio to one of my studio lights for easy access for when I want to activate scenes or lights or various different things within my studio. The compact removable inner plate allows the remote to fit into standard decor style wall plates. Although I do not have any of these in my home, you can check Shane Watley's video that features this. So once you've got it all set up, and it's within HomeKit, the Wemo stage provides up to nine assignable actions in the OMAP. Each of the three buttons support a single press, double press, and long press. These actions can control multiple scenes 
and HomeKit devices. To customize and assign action to the buttons, you need to add into the Ohm app and then the settings of the Wemo Stage Remote. You can choose which scenes or devices you want to add to the buttons. In my case, I tested by using the device with my IKEA smart blinds and also various lights throughout my home. I also use one remote in my studio to control the filming scene that I've created along with controlling various lights and cameras that are connected to various smart plugs. Now let's look at Bluetooth performance. And in order to compare the performance of Bluetooth, I didn't apply the update to one of the Wemo Stage remote. This allowed me to experience the performance of Bluetooth versus Thread. Testing the Wemo Stage remote over Bluetooth quickly highlighted the poor performance of this connectivity method. During my testing, I experienced far too many occasions where I would press the button and it was either slow to respond or simply didn't respond at all. This is not unique though to the Wemo Stage. I've experienced this with other Bluetooth devices. The same slow and reliable performance is also apparent when trying to view and customize the Wemo Stage remote. Frequently, I was getting updating status or the dreaded no response when I was looking in the OMA. When the Wemo Stage does work, most actions take around 10 seconds to execute after pressing a button. However, when mixed with the inconsistent reliability of the Wemo Stage and long wait times for no apparent reason, then using Bluetooth with this device is, in my opinion, a no-go for me. However, and luckily for the Wemo Stage Remote, Belkin has rolled out the firmware update that brings Thread support. In order to use Thread capabilities, however, you do need a HomePod Mini or the new Apple TV 4K. This is because these act as a Thread border router within HomeKit is a starting point to create the Thread mesh network. Now, later this year, Nanoleaf have also promised they're going to be releasing updates to the panels that they produce, the elements, shapes, and lines, which will enable them to work as a HomeKit border router. Comparing Thread versus Bluetooth is like night and day, with Thread winning out by a big margin. Once I enabled Thread on the Wemo stage, it lifted from being a device that I would have otherwise thrown in the bin to something I've been enjoying using. Using the device now with HomeKit over Thread has been lightning fast. I also performed a series of tests using the remote with other devices within my HomeKit setup. I tested it with the IKEA smart lines that connect by the Tradfreight Zigbee hub and it performed well and responded within a very reasonable time. When I tested it with the Eve light strip that connects over Wi-Fi and again, no issues with response times and it responded turned on and off with no issues. Finally, I tested the Wemo Stage Remote with three Philips Hue filament bulbs that are paired together. These bulbs are connected via Zigbee to the Philips Hue hub. The test was in line with others and performed with response times more than good enough. So certainly the thread at talks very well with other standards. So wrapping up this review, is the Wemo Stage Scene Controller a good option? Well, if it was still Bluetooth only, then I would not be recommending this smart remote. But because the latest update to add thread support, this device goes from being very poor to good. I also like the fact that the remote has three buttons that can be programmed with three actions, meaning nine actions in total for this device. This feature gives the Wemo Stage remote a lot of flexibility and in ways you can use it. Yes, I do appreciate that the Wemo Stage is priced at $50 and I could see this as an expensive HomeKit remote, given you can pick up a Philips U remote for around $25. However, if you're not already into Philips U, then you have to consider the bridge, which is an extra $60. But if you do want a thread enabled remote, then the Wemo Stage is the only option in OwnKit at the time of this review. So if you're going to be using the Wemo Stage controller within a thread network, then this is an ideal choice at the moment. You can pick up the Wemo Stage controller in the US and it's a priced at $50 with links in the description below that are affiliate links. Belkin did not say if they plan to roll this out to other countries, so we need to monitor that and see what happens there. So that's a wrap on this review and hopefully you've enjoyed it and you found it useful. Do have any further questions, leave it in the comment section below and I will get back to you. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel as it'd be greatly appreciated. If you also want to follow us on our social channels at Follow HomeKit, then Twitter, Instagram and Facebook, we're constantly putting out information around HomeKit and the Smart Home platform. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon.